Welcome everyone to our February call. Yay! <laughs> so um, it's been a very interesting start of the year. Um, interesting is the only word I can think of to say, really. Last month we looked at last month we looked at a few of the things that were coming up. Um, for us personally, this month has been very, very, very interesting in that, um, for example, I had to go to, um, well, I went to California because Daniela had her baby. Yay! Congratulations, Daniela! <laughs> and um, I stayed there for three weeks. Um, I hadn't been for that length of time in California for a while uh, since she told me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, as I was there, um, I started thinking maybe we could get some place down there to spend some of our time there so we could spend time with uh, Brett and Daniela and the babies. And as soon as I started thinking that, I got sick. <laughs> mm. And I got noise pleas and feeling unwell and I'm thinking, my gosh, you know what's going on here? Uh, individuals who are usually super, super nice got really aggressive with me, like it's insanely so. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And I thought, okay, so let's take away the equation of getting a place here to spend more time here. Boom, everything got better. The individuals got nice again and um, um, I started feeling better. So. You know, it's like, uh, I wanted to share that little story because often when uh, we're very in tune, we're very connected with our um, environment, our people, um, uh, our intuitions, our guides and angels and all these things. What can happen is that if you go elsewhere, if you start kind of considering things that are not really optimum for you, and for your people, or your or the human collective, or the planet, or anything, because if it's not good for you, it's not going to be good for anyone else. Um, the human collective even will start reacting and sending in messengers to uh, dissuade you from the wrong path. <laughs> mm. So um, that's part of it, part of our news. Uh, the other one is, yesterday I was hoping to get some news for you guys about the property in the, in the res here that we were looking to get Larry in Larry's name so we could put a house there or swap it for a larger property. Um, but we didn't get the news. So. Hold on. Larry, I can hear an echo. Hello. Hello. <laughs> He's listening on his phone. Um, okay. So it's it's very much listening to what we do, listening to our environment, listening to the th situations that are coming up for us. Uh, I mentioned a few times before that things will only get hard if you indulge in low-frequency stuff. Um, and that's sometimes a very inner low frequency thing. It could be a program or it could be um, an addiction of some sort. It could be a disconnect. It could be wanting to do or pushing through something that you've already been asked or been told or been guided to move away from, like I was told to move away from California. Um, it wasn't a very supportive location for me anyways, because it's too hot. And I don't do well in the heat. So it was like once my work or whatever was done there, once my body became saturated with the, um, the toxicity of the place for me, I'm not saying that California is toxic for everyone. I'm saying it's for me. Okay, that's really important to clarify here. It's very supportive and nurturing for other people. But my physical body does not do well in the heat. It's allergic to the sun. And my lifestyle was basically, I had to do everything before 10 a.m. Um, because then it got too hot and the sun was too burnt too much. 
and then wait until six or seven in the evening to be able to get out again. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so when we move into or push through or try to get something done and it's filled with difficulties, it's filled with everything's like, it's like, my gosh, you know, everything's going against me. And this another another conversation we've had in the past. Is it because, um, do you, does it mean that negative resistances are stopping you and you have to push through? Or is it that your higher self is telling you um, to choose something else, to do something else. And the, the easiest way that I can think about it is, if you're going through a path and it's full of people trying to stop you because they don't want you to succeed, or situations, entities, or whatever negative stuff come, happening or coming along to try and stop you, but in your inner self, you're feeling happy, content, and pushing through, then I'd say push through, right? Because your inner guidance is telling you, no, 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 let's do this. This is awesome. Um, and then you push through all the difficulties, the people, the, all the stuff that's thrown at you. Now, if the same situation, but inside of yourself, you're feeling angry, upset, you're being pushed by righteousness, or a fear you're doing it because of fear and when you tap into your inner self that's the energy that's the why you know that's the driving uh you forward and all these blocks coming up i would say maybe drop it for a bit yeah maybe drop it for a couple of months see what happens okay um and sometimes difficulties come because we're addicted to processing so you know it's like i remember larry told me he lived with a group of individuals and said all they did all they did all day and all night was process stuff and they would manifest the most incredible dramas and stuff and that was a perfect excuse for them to sit down and start processing and why why does that happen why would anybody be addicted to processing and why do i always say don't process more than 20 minutes or 20% of your time of your day and the rest of the time enjoy your life. Why do I say those things? And it's because basically it's like one of those, I don't know if you um, play computer games, but in computer games you get, you're given a quest or a task or you enter an instance and then you're given rewards right and the rewards are really really good and make you feel good you get a a, a, a a ton of endorphins and stuff same reason why people get addicted to twitter or facebook or uh, whatsapp or all those because they post something and they get likes and you know they, they see the likes going up you know and they get all happy because they get that hit you know and processing is a little bit the same because you have the difficulty, you process it, and then you get the release, and then you feel like that oneness energy, you get all the endorphins released in your physical body. Boom, it's a reward, right? So yeah, it can be addictive. So that's why, and life is not about processing. So life is about living it, enjoying life, enjoying your life here, and making sure that you're setting yourself up for success, uh, inspiration, and being entertained, be entertained, right? Um, it's like for many years, especially as a child, I would look at individuals and I would see the eternal divine being, you know? And that's why I was such a bad judge of character because <laughs> everybody was a divine eternal being, light, dark, or gray, or pink, or blue, or whatever, it didn't matter, you know? They were absolutely beautiful. And then I would look at their lives and they were so, so contracted, so limited and thinking, why, why, why do they do that? You know, it's like, why do they come here? Why do they talk about evolving? Why do they talk about ascension when they already that? It's like, I could not understand it. I could not understand why people would limit themselves or see themselves as a limited being and have a limited experience. And then I figured out that, well, a couple of things. One of them is, 
this physical universe needs limitations in order to exist. So a rock has to stay solid for maybe millions of years. Um, and um, there's cycles of life, things like that. There's different elements, there's water, um, there's all the, you know, the, the chemical table, you know, elements and stuff. And um, so there's all these limitations. And for us to have an experience here, we can't come in being able to dissolve the universe at any moment, right? Because then, you know, it's like, oh, oops, I'm done, boom, it's gone. And what about all the other players, right? So it's like, that's part of it. That was part of it. And then I thought, well, if it's so limited and it's so contract, contracted type thing, and in this planet, we even, in this timeline, we're even more limited in that we're not even freely able to, or we don't think we do, uh, going in and out of the human collective awareness. So, you know, you have to invent the internet to be able to get any data, <laughs> stuff like that. So I'm um, thinking, wow, you know, it's like, what's going on here? And the only, the only word that would come up for me was entertaining. It was entertaining. So no, it's not a school, you know, you're not, you're not evolving. No, you're not getting better except that living in a solid world. Um, uh, you're not growing because you're eternal. Eternal doesn't have stops. So how can you grow? Um, so the only thing we get really good at is playing this game here in this planet. And um, so we tried different things. A few thousand years ago, we decided to like dark stuff was a good idea. Um, now, most of us don't think it's such a good idea, right? Um, on the planet, though, there's still people who love it and still believe it's an awesome idea and they want to carry on. And um, so, is it yesterday or the day before, we sent out a newsletter, no, no, we, we posted on Facebook um, an article that I wrote in 2010, in September 2010. And I was reading it and it's like, my gosh, you know, that's what it was supposed to be. You know, the entire planet was supposed to come online, you know, become aware and go into that new experience of the solid world. An amazing experience with very limit, very small limitations and amazing, amazing exploration, ex, uh, you know, experimentation of what we can do with matter and all sorts of things. And then I was like, yeah, we're totally going to do it, man. And then, yeah, a year later, I get the, no, no, you know, a lot of people say that's against their free will and they want to carry on in this game and it's only a part of you, some of you who are going to go on to have this amazing experience thinking hmm, that's okay um i would like to release a um, article again on maybe in a newsletter but with a, an update on it you know this was written in 2010 in 2011 things changed this is still true for a lot of us but not everybody on the planet and um the the thought of what how that's that's going to come about it's still up in the air. When I talk about manifestation, because this is all what we do, we consciously, we usually unconsciously or through programs manifest everything in our lives, everything, right? So, um, and it's, some people get triggered because they think I'm saying it's your fault, right? And I'm not. I'm not saying it's your fault or the other person's fault. It's simply a co-creation. Okay, manifestation of any could be programs as running and stuff like that. And um, we need, I, I talk about, um, if you want to manifest something, you have to create a really believable story. And I often talk about the story um, in these terms when you talk about healing. So you create a healing story. And what does that healing story look like? Well, it has to look like something that you would accept as real and true right? And other people too, your co-creators have to believe it's real and true. 
So you can actually push through it. I have experienced and seen and been witness to and being part of instantaneous healings, for example. But those are extreme cases. And I suppose that that's the story, it's an extreme case, right? And then the human collective will work around it and make it a believable story that they can accept. Um, but even if you want to manifest your expansion of awareness, even if you want to manifest ascension, uh, enlightenment, even if you want to manifest a beautiful car or um, a cabin in the woods or a wonderful um, romantic relationship, or a billion dollars, or whatever it is that you want to consciously manifest. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, including creating a really believable story. And now that is when we often get caught up in uh, the little traps that we pull, pull, build up for ourselves, right? 